<clears throat> you you have an existence with somebody that you have your imaginary bucket list you know one of our bucket list things was at some point we would hope to be able to go visit and we had our five countries that we were you know we wanted to sometime get to Ireland or South Africa or New Zealand or China what have you and we've both traveled the world but there were certain places that I wanted to again encounter not visit I wanted to encounter and uh, that isn't going to happen you know uh, it just you live for a while saying well I think it might happen could happen uh, but at some point you have to turn and say this is not going to happen um, when I went through the divorce uh, that was also one of those encounters with the mystery of life and without getting into any detail whatsoever that divorce was so painful because in one sense there was no quote reason there wasn't somebody else there was no nothing other than the fact that my life I was wanted to go one way and she did not want to be part of it so I backed off <clears throat> and said fine well, I'll stay here we'll live in Shaker Heights we'll raise the kid die you know and so on and so forth but by then the decision had already been made and it, it it was the wrong decision there was no reason there was no reason not to stay together uh, and it was it was such an emotional journey for me that at some point I thought I was gonna lose my mind I, I just because things had to make sense to me and this did not make any sense so I spent a year trying to make all the adjustments that somehow would cause the reality that I wanted to happen. And uh, I, I'll never forget the day that I walked, we did, went to a, a, you know, a guardians gathering in Chicago. And I walked into, at the end of it, into Joe's cubicle and he was sitting there and I'd seen him during the week but I had not talked to a weekend and I had not talked to him and I stepped in I was just about to drive off and I just stepped in and I stood there and I looked at Joe and Betty was there and uh, and uh, Mary Warren Moffat was there and tears just started coming off down my face I couldn't speak and I said, to, all I could say to Joe was, she's insisting on a divorce. And I just stood there. And Joe lights up one of his Salem's. And he looks at me and he says, Gillis, one thing about Joe is he never called you by your first, he's never called me by my first name. It was always Gillis. Gillis, he said, you need to know one thing. He said, if you've done everything you can to change the situation, then you gotta, you got to realize God knows what he's doing for you and for her. And that was a transformative statement. And as I, as I reflect on it, and as I tell people, what happened was the pain did not go away. The pain was just as intense but I could, I could bear it. I could bear it. And that made all the difference. In the world. Before, I couldn't bear it. I couldn't bear to face the reality. Now I could. And I still didn't want it to happen. I still wanted the life that I could have. And so that, for me, that was a, a releasing word 